Um, famous last words. Uh, let's see, running, there's not a lot of news in the viewer pipeline. We have a, a, a new maintenance RC viewer that has a large collection of assorted fixes in it. Uh, it took a little while getting through QA, but it has finally come out and was deployed, I believe, this morning. Um, and uh, it's busily accumulating users. And uh, way too early to have any numbers on it yet, so no projections about how quickly it might move to the main channel. Uh, since our last meeting, the latest collection of open source contributions has made it to the default release. Uh, so congratulations to all who contributed to that, and thank you very much. Um, very nice, very nice set of changes. Um, and let's see, uh, the Oculus Rift and Experience Tools project viewers are still out there. They're still, the uh, Oculus Rift viewer is getting lots of QA. They're finding lots of issues and it's getting lots of improvements. Um, so, and the, uh, yeah, that new snapshot floater really is great. And, um, thank Naran for that next time you see him. Um, this, uh, he did a terrific job uh, and solved a bunch of problems that were that that weren't strictly speaking part of what he had changed, but he did it anyway. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, so the Rift viewer is getting lots of fixes. The Experience Tools viewers just got a new round of fixes, although I don't remember offhand. It's, it's DK2 now, um, and it's in QA, uh, and, and should pop out as a project viewer sometime soon, if it hasn't already, and uh, as should a new experience tools viewer. Yeah, it hasn't, right. It, they keep finding problems with it, so, um, but we'll put it up real soon, and the goal with it is that it should it should continue to support DK1 within the limits of what DK1 is capable of. Um, so uh, that's not a it's not a blocking goal if that turns out not to be true, but it's uh, it's certainly something we'd like to have be true. Um, Experience Tools is also getting a round of fixes uh, and is coming along nicely um, and should be out there real soon now again with those fixes. Uh, other projects in progress. Um, the group chat changes are continuing. We had a bit of a pause there while something else got in the way of what we needed to release, but that is going forward again. Uh, we're getting good information from that. Um, the hover project is proceeding. Uh, it, we're actually getting some work done on that. Uh, early stages yet, but we'll, we'll have something at some point soon. Um, and uh, then there's the textures and mesh data on CDNs project, which uh, we've decided to change our strategy on that just a little bit. Uh, the current experimental configuration has turned out to be sufficiently successful that we have decided we're going to go ahead with deploying it um, more widely and see how that how well that works. Uh, so again, no, this is the version for which no viewer changes are required. And what we will be doing is putting that out on a micro channel on Agni next week. Uh, I think it's already on parts of Aditi. Um, so uh, that's pretty exciting. And we're going to try and sort of put it out there on a, on a, not one of the main RC channels because those are too big still. Uh, but we're going to, we're going to create a little tiny channel um, and, and put, put it out on that uh, and see how that goes.
as far as I know, there's no viewer compatibility issue with this, so it should just work. Uh, famous last words again. Um, but that will give us a way to measure um, some more things about how it behaves and um, and begin to test the how well the CDN behaves at larger sizes uh, with more users and so forth. So uh, no region, no word at this point on which regions will be in those tests. Uh, if somebody has something they would really like to put into that test, um, feel free to contact me, uh, and I will see what I can do. Um, so, uh, and then if that goes well, uh, you know, we'll, we're going to, we're going to take this, um, carefully, uh, but we'll, uh, if that goes well, we'll deploy it even more widely than that and eventually possibly take it to the entire grid. And then at some point further in the future, there will be no, 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 I don't do ETAs. Um, Beyond the one that we've already got in plan for next week, uh, <laughs> um, the uh, the the, <laughs> the yeah. Well, when, when we're when we're confident, um, but it's uh, when we're confident depends on what happens next week and the week after. Uh, so the um, now you've made me forget what I was going to say next. Uh, oh yes, longer term plan. The longer term plan has not changed, which is that we will we will provide um, a set of viewer changes that uh, everybody should adopt. Um, you know, reasonably, reasonably promptly, and um, and that will enable us to get one more component when when we have that ready. That will may enable us to get one more component out of the out of the path. Right now, what we're having to do is uh, give you a URL to use um, for fetching textures and mesh data. Um, you end up adding a parameter to it and sending it back, uh, and then we end up having to transform that URL into a different one so that it can go directly to the asset servers and get whatever it is you're supposed to get. Um, that little translation step, we will, we would eventually like to be able to remove, um, and that will require that we make uh, a viewer side change. So we'll we'll come up with a viewer side change that. Uh, changes how that how the URL is constructed from the base URL to the actual individual asset URL. Um, and that will enable us to remove another piece from the pipeline um, and thereby improve the performance that much more. Um, although that change will probably be relatively small, but it's a it's a piece we don't we, we shouldn't need. So um, uh, the texture fetching in the new scheme is via port 80. So, um, going to the CDN, it's all port 80 fetching. So, you can do that now, uh, on the regions that have this new change. So, um, yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice thing. ISPs will be able to cache the textures. Yes, they are being served with cache control headers that are appropriate. Um, but the whole point of this is that we're going to be directing to the uh, directing the the requests through a CDN, which will be doing the caching as well. So you'll already a, you'll already have a cache um, very close to you, network distance. Uh, so the marginal value of having another one will be relatively small. But as far as we can tell, um, this should be compatible with any caches that happen to be there anyway, depending on how the cache is implemented. 
it will it will actually offset quite a lot of load on our side. Um, so uh, the what we have seen in our testing is that if you are the very first user to load a set of textures into the CDN's cache, that is, you're the first user to visit a particular area that has unique textures in it um, that uh, has never been cached by the CDN before, then um, your texture load time will not be any better and might even, under some circumstances, be a little bit worse than it would than it is today with the current scheme um, just a little bit but everybody else including you who it visits the region after that will get substantially better performance than they would have the first time um, uh, would the uh, wouldn't the uploader be the first person um, Yes, but of course, uh, yes, for new textures, that yes, they would. Right. But the uploader is only going to see it's, it's, the CDN has some large number of points of presence around the world, right? And each of those has a cache. And those caches are separate. So it's, you know, if you're the first person from Rio de Janeiro, to visit a particular region, then you'll have a slightly longer load time than you would have today. Um, and that has to do with why the, with the way that they're loading the textures. Uh, but every subsequent time that you enter the region and every subsequent time that anybody else ever enters the region from your, who, who shares that same CDN node with you, which is usually a lot of people, um then those everyone else will thereafter will get dramatically better load times so um this is the theory this is what our early testing on a very small scale seems to support um and that's a you know on the whole that's a big net benefit um so uh we expect that that's what we'll get and we're going to actually put it out and see if that's if, if our expectation is correct do you know if those caches will be large enough so they are not expired and rotated around and stuff like that we're we're putting very long expiration times on on what we're serving to them so they should be held there for a long time um it is one of the things we're going to find out whether or not they're large enough to do the job effectively but that the only the only real way to find that out is to put more regions out there and see how it behaves so that's what we're going to do uh you know that i don't discuss costs of anything so i'm not going to um yeah the um at present, since we have not changed the form of the URLs, there's still, you know, a base URL with a, a query string on it, texture ID equals or mesh ID equals, whatever it is, and, and the UUU ID. There are caches in the world who will decide that because this has a query string on it, it's not cacheable, even if we serve it with headers that say that it is. Um, if you have a cache, the, the, the CDN cache is not like that. They do it correctly. Um, and so those, you are, those, those responses are cached. Otherwise, all of this would be pointless. Um, but if you have a cache between you and the CDN that doesn't do that correctly, that is treats anything with a query string on it as uncacheable, then you will, you will lose you will lose the benefit of your more local cache, whatever it is. Um, of course, if that was true, your more local cache hasn't been doing you any good all along. So uh, that's no different. Um, when we 
when we reorganize the form of the URLs, which will require a viewer change, we will do it in a way that doesn't have a query string parameter on it. Um, we'll just put the, the, the UUID somewhere in the path, and then uh, that issue will go away. Right. Right. Well, um, I, th I think you weren't here when when I said it before, but the new the new ones are on port eighty, so it's all good. Dick, if this uh, CDN is worth its money, you shouldn't really be needing your local squid. That's right. That's right. In fact, uh, it it may be. Um, you know that it, it is not always true that having a cache is a good thing, um, depending on the implementation. Um, and so far, this CDN is doing very well. So, yes, but on a so far, it's a very, very, very small scale. So, yeah, in my test, it it worked quite well because my latency to the you know usual seems is about 150 200 milliseconds and this cdn seems to have a node here in europe that is very close like 15 milliseconds and in right. my test case it, it loaded all those meshes in about one third of the time that it took from from regular sim so that's i'm i'm only you know waiting to see you cannot really tell un until it's deployed over the whole grid if they will have enough uh, capacity, you know, storage-wise, to hold the, the commonly used content. Because if it starts trashing and expiring and rotating, then it's not going to be that good. But this needs a full-scale uh, deployment to, to, to tell. Right. Uh, but we're going to work our way up to full-scale in baby steps. Um. So, uh, we'll we'll see. Um, we'll we'll do we'll do. Uh, I, I think we're talking like sixteen or thirty-two regions or something like that. Was was what we were back, batting around. Um, I'm not sure what what they're going to actually do, but um, uh, but that will be pretty cool if it works. So uh, I'm I'm going to be watching closely and. Uh, I will share with you what I know about it uh, in two weeks. By then, we should have a week and a half's worth of data. Um, and let's see. Uh, so I think that's all I had to talk about. Uh, if I could ask a question about the group chat work. Yeah. Um, is it going to have an effect on the group chat servers uh, actually dying? We've noticed that getting a lot worse where they have to actually reboot the group chat servers because the group chats just become unusable for anything other than sending a notice out. Uh, it turns out that they're, they're not actually dying. Um, they're running out of ports. Um, and that's because of some network issues that we have just made and deployed a set of changes to address. So hopefully that problem will get better again. Um, that's not actually a result of the changes we've been making. It was something else that happened that's completely independent. So um, we're, we, we have made a change to try to alleviate that. I don't I don't know. I don't think it's actually been deployed. We don't have anybody from that team here today. Um, but uh, I'm hoping that that will will uh, reduce. But yeah, the um, yeah rebooting, rest restarting the chat service um, does solve the problem. But it's um, it's a it's obnoxious. And yes, we're aware of that problem. And in fact, I get several emails a day about that issue so uh, um, the so we, we think that it that will make that better um, but uh, it's a little too early to actually measure a difference uh, 
So, um, but we're also making some other changes. Um, and, and then we've been speculating about what the next round of changes after that will be, but, um, it's still too early to actually do anything with those. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, oh, cool. and welcome, welcome back to Izzy, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Izzy's going to try and join us from now on again. So if you have uh, support relevant issues, he will try to carry them back to the support team. Yay, Izzy. Uh, I, I, I must say that this weekend when I filed the reports on the uh, group chats being unusable, um, I, I got a much quicker response from support than I have in the past. So, Well, they're getting better at it because they've had a lot of practice lately. Um, but <laughs> well, I don't know if somebody I, kicked some butt or what, but uh, it, uh, it, was, it was good to get a result back a lot faster than 24 hours later. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't speak to why that is. Really, I'm, I'm being a little bit facetious, but they have had a lot of practice lately. Um, uh, Grumpy, you had an update you wanted to pass on. Yeah, this is just a quick heads up. Um, we've done some A-B testing on the users uh, with uh, some changes to the login screen. And we found uh, that there are some changes we can make that increase retention uh, by a fairly sizable number uh, of, you know, 3 to 5 percent. Uh, so we're going to be putting forward some changes to the both the newbie login screen and then uh, the subsequent returning user login screen. Uh, they're going to be gradual and sometimes not as beautiful as we might like all at once. However, uh, you can be sure that they've all been tested and they perform better. So, yay! So there will be uh, that that will show up in a in a candidate viewer. There will be an RC for it um, sometime next week, and then um, once the RC is done testing, it'll roll out to release. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to hide from Whirly. Um, I would never. <laughs> uh, I I believe that it does not. That is the, the 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 existing widgets should continue to work. If you find that the existing widgets that we've given you are not working, treat that as a bug. You can report in the usual ways, and I will try to get it addressed. Um, but the the some of the changes are things like rearranging the, the actual login bar. They're not the widgets that are in the in the screen. They're the, lo the login bar. And um, since, as she said, Grumpity, we have, as Grumpity said, we have, we've actually, you know, done a pretty careful fairly scientific experiment to see whether this improves the rate at which people actually log in after having created an account, and it does. Um, and that's good for everybody, so it would be great if as many as possible of you would um, integrate similar changes. Uh, because we know that not all new accounts end up on our viewer. Yeah, we, uh, it, it turns out we had a glitch in our crash analyzer system and it's now some days behind. So we're not, we're not completely current on what the crash recent, on the very recent crashes. Uh, and it will take a couple of days yet to catch up. So it'll be a little while before we're behind. So thank you for mentioning that. Um,
Uh, other issues, questions, topics? Have you started working on the tools update project? You know, recompiling. Oh, yes. For visual yes, we have. Video. Thank you. I should have put that on the agenda and I forgot about it. Um, so thank you very much for the reminder. Um, yes. Uh, we now believe that the new auto build, uh, which is documented. Let me find it here. Uh, the changes actually are documented. Get the URL for this. Okay, so this is the auto build improvements um, that are part of the tools update project. So the, the, the big three items for the tools update project are switching to the new auto build, um, switching to Visual Studio 2013, and switching to Xcode 5. Um, for, for all of those, we have to recompile everything in the world, so we're trying to do them all at once. Um, the last changes we know we want to make to the new auto build, um, yeah, the large address repo is not the current one anymore, but, um, so, uh, Python 2.7 is preferred. It seems to work with 2.6. We've actually taken the warning that says if you are using 2.6 out, you, you should upgrade. Um, you may have to do a little bit of fiddling with um, installing the right prerequisites. If you have problems with 2.6 and you would like us to help with them, you know, put email in the in the open dev list. Um, I will try to watch that more closely than I usually do for the next few weeks. Um, the So that's that's all coming along. There are a couple of things about the new auto build that are not 100% backwards compatible. You do have to make uh, at least one change to any auto build configuration to, to use it because it now requires that instead of putting a version attribute in your configuration for your package, you put a version file attribute. Um, and then after you've done the build and before it creates the metadata, it reads the file. Um, we're trying to reduce the number of different places the version has to be edited so that it will all be correct. Um, uh, actually, that's, I fixed that tech. Um, the, I, I just put that change in the other day, um, yesterday. Um, so, uh, it, it is now, it now only insists that the, that the last element of the path to the package be the same, um, in the installable and in the, um, the actual and, uh, in the URL. So, um, and of course the hash has to be the same and all that, but, I did. I did make that fix. Um, so that's available. Uh, and the so the the one of the benefits is that this keeps you from using two different versions of the same package in your in your build tree, and that's also one of the nuisances. Um, um, well. Try it on the latest version, which is to say today's, um, and then let me know what you what you think is happening, Tech. Uh, but so uh, that's underway. Uh, the it's linked on that wiki page. I think, yeah, using uh, on the on the using version one zero section, and I recommend if you're going to play with it, um, use the pip install command that's there to install it, so that it pulls in all the right um, dependencies correctly. Yeah, one of the things one of the things that um, 
this one insists on is that the package name, that, that the name in the installable configuration matched the name that it was built with. So we had, we had packages that were uh, like, uh, I think one example was it, the, the package was built with the name Google Mock, um, but the viewer installable configuration called it GMock. And that's not allowed anymore. They have to match. Um, so there will be a few of those that, that need to get cleaned up. Uh, and, um, and, and once they're all cleaned up, then we won't have that problem again. Um, so, uh, and we have started building things with Xcode 5, a few things, and we're working on getting the Visual Studio 2013 effort rolling. Um, once we've done that, we'll try to document what version of everything we're using to do it, but we're, we're a little early in that process to, to do that yet. Singularity has been building with uh, Silang Clang. I don't know how you pronounce that compiler name from Xcode yeah. 5. Is it Clang or Silang? I don't um, know. It's one or the other, I think. <laughs> in, in any case, uh, we found uh, it to be quite buggy at uh, higher uh, optimization settings. So just as a word of uh, caution, if you we had it compiling on O3 flag, and we found that it produces quite a few bugs, compiler bugs, incorrect code. So <clears throat> when you start working on this, if you find stuff breaking in exotic and unexpected ways, you might want to try, you know, turning down the optimization level. Maybe that will fix it for you. Thank you. We had to go to O1 for some files. Uh, yes, the, we, we are using the 10.9 SDK and setting the minimum version to 10.7. Yeah, you can, you can, uh, the, the naming convention we're going to try to use is, uh, that the, the repos we're working on for this will be named, will be under Linden Lab and will be named 3P dash update dash whatever the package name is so you can you can follow along uh, and then they'll all be forks of the canonical 3p dash whatever it is um, so you'll be able to see what we're up to I'm kind of hoping we can get this done in two or three weeks, but we'll see. Uh, eventually, no, when we, the, the convention we're following is that when we do package live, you know, when we do one of the packages, when we're updating a package, you put it in some other repo than the canonical one, you build it, you use that package when you build a viewer, and when that viewer is released, goes to the default release, then we pull the corresponding uh, third-party package sources into the canonical repository. So, uh, so eventually they'll all go back to 3P dash something. Hopefully sometime in October, but we'll see. Yeah, uh, I've been waiting for somebody to pick up the 
Space Navigator thing for ages. Um, that'd be great. Uh, I I have an I have a one of the old style space navigators. I gather that there are new ones that the that our stuff doesn't work on, but I don't have one. I guess we'll have to do something about that at some point. Well, the the Monty packages that he did as part of the library update project that went to the default release. What was it about three weeks ago now? So those repositories have all been pulled to the canonical repo. So you can you can use the canonical one now. Linden Lab three P whatever. And as far as I know, other than the tools upgrade project, there are no other library and package changes uh, pending on any of the other projects. At least not big ones. Yeah, libcurl, but that's probably later than this. And oh, and there was there's a there's a new URL lib uh, that one of the main branches is using. But that's a a new library we weren't using before, not a change to an existing one. Well, it's way smaller than WebKit, so I don't think it can be as badly messed up. Speaking of uh, WebKit, is a uh, work uh, on bringing uh, Chrome embedding framework in, continuing? Uh, that's kind of on hold because everybody who was working on it is working on the tools update project. But we'll get back to it. We're just not going to be making any progress on it for a couple of weeks. Anything else? We're not going to let Oz get out early again, are we? Uh, the Z offset project. Yeah, I, I think we'll have to put a control in the viewer. I haven't seen a proposal for one yet, but um, that doesn't mean it's not happening. It just means I haven't seen it. Um. Mac Cocoa Bugs. Yeah, I'm, I have nothing to say about cocoa bugs. There, there are no cocoa bugs. We're, we're, you know, you guys can keep asking about them until you're blue in the face. But as far as I'm concerned, we don't have anything left to do. These Actually, are not the bugs you are looking for. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, um, we did get a couple of other, not cocoa bugs specifically, but a couple other small uh, things from Cinder uh, that need fixing um, that we're going to fix, but they're not the ones you've been complaining about. And those will be in the fall round of of uh, snowstorm changes. And no, I won't predict when that will be. Sometimes fall is spring. Who knows? Right after the group chat sixth. 
<laughs> well, I'm I'm trying not to refer to it as fixing group chat as improving group chat, um, just because fix implies that, that everybody's work. that everybody's happy with it, and I'm not. I'm not sure we'll ever reach that point, no matter what we do. You can never please everybody, guys. Sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you can say fall because you didn't say which fall, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay, I think we're at least we're got about some that. on the go. What do we got? Uh, She's typing at the moment. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Fall in New Zealand. Uh, yes, it probably is better to file new issues, um, and they should be agonizingly thorough about the information they provide, because mostly we can't reproduce it now. The keystroke entry lag is not a viewer-specific bug. It just isn't. Um, when it's happening to the viewer, it's happening to everything else, too, so... It's it's a system problem, and it's mostly fixed by people who upgrade to the most recent version of 10.9. In fact, we have not yet found anybody who is not fixed by upgrading to 10.9. And if you're on something older than 10.9, upgrade! It's free! Or wait a couple of weeks and upgrade to 10.10. Yeah, or that. Um that is not something I would necessarily recommend if you want um, the viewer to work beautifully because we haven't tested it there. Uh, I look at the way region server is setting up the HTTP headers. Texture fetches looks... Yes. Um, you can thank Monty for that, actually. Um, for the header changes. Right. Um, the pipelining viewer is coming along beautifully. Any, and, and it's screamingly fast. I heard one of the RQA people the other day refer to it as the weaponized viewer. Um, Well, Worley, maybe you can coach them on how to file a good bug report. Um, and then we'll have to find out if we can match what configuration they have in-house. I don't, I don't know if we can. There are a lot of variations out there. Was uh, the Singularity released uh, a new version last week which has upgraded uh, voice files so you can... You know, oh, good. Have VVOX people a bit more happy with uh, with the versions used on the grid. I, I'm sure they'll appreciate that, especially if your users actually upgrade to it. Yep. Well, you know, users, but most will, I I think. Um, and you want to bet? Also, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, we'll see. Yeah, they will upgrade. Most will upgrade. I don't know how fast, but within a month or two. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, that will that will make them happy, but uh, 
That's great. Yes, and while they are happy, could you ask them to make a Linux uh, version of the yeah. kit? We we ask them once a month. I have a meeting with them every month, and we bug them about it every month. And so far, they keep saying no. Um, uh, that reminds me, though, of there. there is a batch of other voice fixes coming out. Uh, Aura is doing a, a version. It hasn't quite reached... Uh, it's in in QA now. It will reach the the um, no. It's not viewer stare. This is a different one. Uh, although it may be merged with viewer stare. Um, Fix it it's, inside a viewer or a new kit. It's this is viewer changes. Um, it there are some problems with how we clean up sessions at that shut down and. And uh, a couple yes, of things. Yes, I noticed uh, voice uh, demon uh, keeps running after your shutdown sometimes. Is, is that well, that that's one flavor of it. That's one flavor of it. There's also on Windows. Uh, we were telling the we were telling the voice process to clean up its sessions and then killing it so fast that it didn't have a chance to actually do it, and that caused you know spurious error logs to appear on the Vivox servers. And uh, there was a similar bug on the Mac where you keep killing and restarting sessions, and that's really driving the Vivox people crazy. Um, so Aura has done a bunch of fixes for those, um, and they'll be out in a candidate viewer real soon now. Um, so when you when you see that one come out, I'll try to remember to mention it again next week. It should be out, or next next meeting, uh, it should be out by then. Um, do try to pick up those fixes. These are all fixes in the viewer. There's also a fix for, um, that makes it, uh, that removes the ability to figure out where somebody teleported to by watching their voice channels. So, um, the, you know, which is, uh, you know, kind of a griefing stalking tool. Um, and, and we, and we fix that. So, um, when those changes come out, it would be good if you, if you pick those up quickly. They're, they're nice and separated from everything else. Um, so, uh, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a big deal for you to merge them. Um, but it's a, it's a nice set of fixes that makes voice a little more robust and, and fixes a bunch of problems. I'm hoping it addresses this uh, lingering uh, voice demon problem because we so far uh, the people are reporting that the uh, 4.6 is working fine with regards of quality and stuff but but sometimes people end up with 10 15 processes uh, just idling. yeah we we have fixed a bunch of those ourselves but it, we recognize that there are still some left and i'm not sure why but we're gonna and, and I don't know whether those are addressed in what uh, Aura has been working on or not, but we'll, if if not, then we'll keep working on them. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll see what the, what the story with that is. Um, viewer stare is something else that's um, Aura experimenting with uh, having avatars look at the most recent speaker. Um, and uh, some of you may may have noted on my last uh, appearance at the Firestorm Q and A online thing. Um, I yeah, voice speaker, not just text. In fact, we we keep we 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 follow text speakers too, but at a lower priority. So if people are using voice, we we watch them, and if they're typing, then we watch them. If nobody's using voice um, lately. Um, so the, uh, and she's been having fun with that one. And I, at, at my last appearance on the Q and A, I was, I accidentally ran a test version and that's why I kept swiveling my head around like I was a, a you know, on some kind of drugs or something. It was, it made a really funny video actually. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a little worse than tennis match because it was three dimensional. I, the, I was sitting in an auditorium with a big sloped seating, so I was looking up and down and left and right, and it was it was pretty funny. Um, it was entirely unintentional. I really didn't mean to be running that viewer when I got there, but I, I had I had blown it. Um, 
Yeah, there's a setting that controls it. Um, it's the, the setting exists now. It's just that we're expanding it to cover voice as well as text. Um, and it, when it works, it's, it's, it's pretty nice. It makes, you know, the group dynamic look really good in a meeting like this. Um, maybe I'll be running that viewer when I come here next week. We'll see. Okay, this is a good venue for testing it since people talk here. All right. Are we done? We're about out of time. It's almost the weekend. A few minutes. Uh, the, the awareness project is on the roadmap, but not yet begun. It is on the roadmap. Everybody thinks we should do it. We just haven't. We've got too many balls in the air right now, so we haven't started it yet. Uh, there's some stuff.